You bet. Get ready for this. It's a wild fact. Did you know jellyfish have been to space? That's right, actual outer space. Back in the 1990s, NASA sent over 2,000 jellyfish polyps baby jellies aboard the space shuttle Columbia. Scientists wanted to see how microgravity affected their development. It was a cosmic journey for some of the planet's oldest gooey creatures. Imagine these gelatinous blobs just floating around, not in the ocean, but hundreds of miles above Earth. It's bizarre and wonderful, right? Even simple animals can teach us incredible things. And the story gets stranger. The jellyfish born in space seem to develop normally. A huge discovery. They looked like their Earth-bound relatives. But when these astro jellies returned to Earth, scientists noticed something off. They had trouble figuring out which way was up or down in Earth's gravity. They couldn't orient themselves and swam in confused circles. Let's clear something up right away. Jellyfish are not fish at all. I know the name is a bit confusing, but it's a classic case of mistaken identity. Fish are vertebrates, which means they have backbones, gills to breathe, and fins to swim. Jellyfish have none of those things. Bell, tentacles, and oral arms. They are invertebrates, part of a big animal group called Cnidarians, sea anemones, and other relatives. The name stuck, but biology tells the real story. Not fish. Fantastic drifters. And that is part of their charm. So next time you hear jellyfish, remember, they're not fish, they're Cnidarians. Simple, ancient, and totally their own thing. Now let's look at how their bodies work. Wobbly, wiggly, and brilliant. Up next, the wobbly, wiggly world of jellyfish bodies. When you look at a jellyfish, the first thing you probably notice is its soft bell-shaped body. This part is called the bell or medusa, and it gives the jellyfish its signature look. This bell is made up of about 95% water. That's more water than almost any other animal. High water content makes them transparent and gelatinous, helping them blend into their watery surroundings. It also makes them buoyant, so they float effortlessly. A body built for drifting. Hanging down from the bell are the parts that make jellyfish so famous, their tentacles. These are specialized appendages covered in thousands of microscopic stinging cells called nematocysts. Tentacle number and length vary wildly between species. Some jellyfish have just a few short tentacles, while others, like the lion's mane jellyfish, can have hundreds stretching over 100 feet, longer than a blue whale. These tentacles are essential for hunting and for self-defense. Many jellyfish also have frilly, ribbon-like oral arms that guide food into the mouth. Think, tentacles as fishing lines, oral arms as hands a coordinated, efficient system for a creature without a brain. The jellyfish body is a marvel of simple, effective design. It's a living parachute, a floating net, and a defensive fortress. Fragile looking, yet resilient, built to conquer oceans. You might think, because jellyfish are such simple creatures, they just float around wherever the ocean takes them. And for the most part, you'd be right. The word plankton actually comes from a Greek word meaning drifter, wanderer. Most travel is dictated by the ocean's currents, winds, and tides. They are masters of going with the flow, using the ocean's powerful forces as their personal transportation. This lets them travel vast distances without using much energy. But don't be fooled. They are not helpless passengers. They move using a form of jet propulsion. By squeezing the muscles around the rim of their bell, they push water out from underneath it. The contraction drives them forward, then the bell relaxes and re-expands for the next pulse. A rhythmic pulsing motion, beautiful and efficient. Not strong enough to fight a powerful current, but enough to move up and down the water column. This vertical movement is incredibly important. You can find jellyfish in every ocean on Earth, from warm Caribbean waters to freezing Arctic seas. Some species even live in freshwater lakes and rivers. Their drift has let them colonize virtually every aquatic habitat. Jellyfish are famous for one thing above all else, their sting. This is their primary tool for both hunting and self-defense. Their long, trailing tentacles are armed with millions of microscopic, spring-loaded harpoons. These are called nematocysts. Each nematocyst contains a tiny, coiled, venomous thread. They're like little triggers just waiting to be sprung. When a fish brushes up against the tentacle, these triggers fire instantly. It's one of the fastest biological processes known, a fraction of a second. Once triggered, the nematocyst fires its tiny harpoon. The barb punctures the skin and injects venom. With thousands firing at once, small prey can be paralyzed and stunned. 
It's the perfect remote-controlled hunting system and a defensive curtain that wards off predators. Some animals like sea turtles eat jellyfish, but most creatures learn to avoid them. The pain of a sting is a strong warning to stay away. Some, like the box jellyfish in Australia, have venom that can be lethal to humans. That reputation keeps swimmers far from them. But how do jellyfish eat? Once captured and paralyzed, the prey is moved toward the mouth. The oral arms wrap and guide food into a single opening that acts as mouth and anus. An all-in-one efficient feeding system for a life of floating and feeding. The world of jellyfish is filled with truly bizarre and spectacular species. One favorite is the fried egg jellyfish. Yes, it looks exactly how it sounds. You might see these floating in the Mediterranean, a breakfast gone for a swim. They are relatively harmless to humans. Their unique look makes them stand out. Then there's the lion's mane jellyfish, a true giant. Its bell can be over seven feet wide with tentacles up to 120 feet long, longer than a blue whale. For beauty, look to the flower hat jelly from Japan. Pinstriped bell and tentacles coiled in pink, green, and orange. Beautiful, but its sting can cause painful rashes. But perhaps the strangest is the immortal jellyfish, Turritopsis dorni. When it gets old, sick, or damaged, it can revert back to its earliest polyp stage. It settles, buds, and starts its life cycle again, biologically immortal and less eaten. Scientists study this for clues about aging and regeneration. It may hold secrets that could inform future medicine, nature's endless surprises. Next time you see a jellyfish at the shore, don't just see a blob. Think of its cousins, the astrojellies, who went where few earthlings have gone. They've been here for over 500 million years, pioneers and survivors. Amazing science hides everywhere, even in a drifting brainless blob. Thanks for watching.